Previously, we created a function together to increment our views inside our table in Superbase and per extension with Postgres. But we can call this function with what we call triggers. If you want to know where are your triggers inside Superbase, you can go here on the left on database. And when you click on it, you got a list up there. So I'm going to zoom a bit. And here we got triggers. And when you click on triggers, here we are. You got a list of triggers here and you got uh, the triggers under every schema. OK, you got schema real time, schema PG sodium, schema storage. And here we got the name of our triggers and the table where they act. So here we got subscription for tier checks filter. We see that the function that we call is subscription check filters and it's triggered on certain events. Here it's before insert, before update. So we understand that triggers are calling function at a certain time when there is a special event. And here we see that we got these events before insert, before update. For those who don't know Postgres, let's look at the definition of triggers. PostgreSQL triggers are database callback functions which are automatically performed, invoked, when a specified database event occurs. So we can uh, see here that our function, our triggers, are um, actually linked to a specific database. A trigger that is marked for each row is called once for every row that the operation modifies. So when we get back here, we see that we've got a function tier check filters, on the table subscription, the function that is called is subscription check filters. And here we got the events before insert, before update. OK, at first, what we can do is to click up here to create a new trigger. And we can see here we got the name of a new trigger. OK, so here, please use snake case by default. And here you can check the table if you want to check a specific table. So here we've got session hoth, we got user hoth. And we've got up here orders, the table that we created before in this course. Here are the list of the events, OK? We've got insert, update, delete, OK? These are the events you want to trigger uh, your trigger and the function. And here you got the uh, trigger type. So when you click on it, it's before or after, as you see here, OK? Before the event or after the event. For the orientation of the statement, we can say that it fire once for each processed row. Most of the time you will select that. And down here, you're going to choose the function to trigger. So this is the first way to add a new trigger. If you don't want to use the SQL editor, you can go here and click to add a new trigger. And down here, you would select the function that you would have created uh, previously. If you want to know how to create a function, please refer to the lesson on functions. OK, I'm going to write a SQL query to create a table, to create a function to add every time somebody is going to authentify to my Superbase instance a row in this table users. Be safe, it's not going to be about the auth.users table. It's going to be about the users table. And then I'm going to create the trigger immediately. So I'm going to click here on new query. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to type create table users. OK, right now I don't got any table. So here it's going to be good. It's going to be with an ID, with UUID, references here, uh, auth.users. OK, not null. And it's going to be primary key. Here we are. So I'm going to zoom a little bit for you. Here we are. Then it's going to have an email and I'm going to store the email text here. OK. So I'm going to go down here and what I'm going to do, I'm going to create also a function. So I'm going to type create or replace because maybe we're going to run the query uh, several times if we make mistakes. OK, function. And here is going to be public dot um, handle new user. Here we are. There we go. And then we are going to return here returns a trigger. It's really important at this step to return the trigger because we uh, fix the trigger on this function. OK, you have to return the trigger. So here is going as double dollar. Here we are. And we are going to type begin and end. And between those two, we are going to pass our function. And we want to say insert into public dot users. So here the table that we've got up there, we want to insert an ID and an email. And where it's going to come from, 
where it's going to come from the new user that is going to uh, actually log in or uh, subscribe to uh, my application. So basically here we've got new that is available in my scope. So what I can do is to say values here and it's going to be new ID and then I'm going to pass new dot email. Okay. So here I'm going to return new. Here we are. And after I'm going to show you where it comes from exactly. Here we are. So at the end, I'm going to type here language uh, and here is going to be PLP GSQL and it's going to be of type security definer. Here we are. And here we are. We've got our function here that is going to work. Okay, down here, I'm going to create a trigger. So I'm going to type create trigger and here on new user. Okay. And here it's going to be after insert and it's going to be on auth.users. Here we are. And uh, down there, what I want to write here is that for each row, I want to do what? I want to execute procedure, okay? And here it's going to be what? I think you understood. It's going to be public handle new user. And here we are, it's supposed to be good. So now I'm gonna go on my database. I'm gonna go on functions. And here on function, we see that we've got handle new user which is return type trigger, okay? And if I go on my triggers here, down here, I'm going to unzoom, here we are. We can see that we've got our new user, which is my trigger that is going to call what? It's going to call, actually, we don't see it here, but it's going to call my function. Okay, let's get back to our tables. And here we've got our table that has been created. There is no row level security enabled, so maybe I would I want to do it. So I'm going to type enable row level security. We've got our table with ID and email. And what we're going to do, we are going to go to authentication, add a new user and see if our trigger is going to be actually calling the function and had the new user. So I'm going to click here on authentication. Here we are. So I'm going to take this uh, fake user. It's going to be this one and I'm going to put a new number. Click on invite user. Okay, the invite has been sent. And now if I go to my table users, here we are. We see that we've got our function that has been triggered. All right, so what we did here, we created in our script a table users. Then we created a function. And this function can be found here in functions alpha here and all new user. And if I click here, exactly, we've got the code that I wrote between begin and end just here with the public, et cetera, et cetera. Then I created a trigger called on new user that is triggered after insert. And this trigger is triggered every time there is a new user on uh, the table hoth. So if I get back to my table, I got my own table user, public.user, which is here, we, we see the schema. And what happened is that I added a new user through the authentication system. I invited a new user. So if I click here and I look at the schema down here, which is Hoth, I got a list of tables related to the schema Hoth. And down there I got users. And we can see that in users, I got my um, new user here. So when I have a new user, it's new.email that I catched inside my function. And with this new email that I catch inside my function, I said, add it to the public.user table. 